Now here we got a question asking why the left recurrent laryngeal nerve is comparatively longer compared with the right side and uh, why there is uh, this kind of a discrepancy because uh, on one side there is persistence of some pharyngeal arch artery. So which pharyngeal arch artery is persisting on the left side? That is the question and for that purpose let us look at the developing pharyngeal arch arteries first. You will notice that in the beginning there are six pharyngeal arch arteries though the fifth arch is rudimentary and is not going to contribute to any of the remnants in the adult. Moreover, not only fifth but the arch number one, two are also vestigial. As you can see here, arch number one and arch number two on both sides, they are disappearing. So which arches are persisting in the adult if one, two and five disappear on both sides? Obviously, if one, two and five will disappear, what will persist will be arch number three, four and six. What is the third arch artery doing? Third arch artery forms the common carotid and the internal carotid arteries in the adults which you can show now. So this is the common carotid artery and internal carotid artery. Yes, on both sides you can show. So third arch artery will contribute to part of the common carotid artery, internal carotid artery. What will happen to fourth arch artery? If you're talking about the fourth arch artery, you will find fourth arch artery on the right side will form a part of right subclavian artery. Fourth arch artery on the right will form a part of right subclavian artery. Yes, you can show that uh, here. So right subclavian artery contributed by fourth arch artery? Yes, you can mention. And then what will happen to fourth arch artery on the left side? This is the fourth arch artery on the left side and it will forming part of the arch of the aorta which you can show there. Which part of the arch of the aorta? The one which is uh, lying between the two branches namely the common carotid and the subclavian artery. So this part of the arch of the aorta will come from the fourth arch artery. What is the sixth arch artery doing then? Sixth arch artery on right or left side give you pulmonary arteries and ductus arteriosus. So here is the sixth arch artery on either side and you will find that it is contributing to the pulmonary artery on either side. This is the pulmonary artery on either side contributed by sixth arch artery plus it also forms ductus arteriosus which is shown here. Now understand ductus arteriosus right regresses and left is left. So right regresses left is left you mean to say ductus arteriosus present only on the left side? Yes. Not on the right side? No. So, so you will find there used to be a vagus nerve giving branches towards the larynx and one of the branch of the vagus is recurrent laryngeal nerve. So this is the vagus nerve which is giving a recurrent laryngeal nerve on the right side and also on the left side. They are called recurrent because they come back towards the larynx there. And uh, this uh, recurrent laryngeal nerve are the nerve of the sixth arch. So they are running with the sixth arch artery. That means recurrent laryngeal nerve branch of the vagus will be with the pulmonary artery on the right side and ductus arteriosus on right side. Similarly, pulmonary artery and ductus arteriosus on the left side. Now, they were hooking under the ductus arteriosus actually but since the right ductus arteriosus is regressing this uh, no more hooks under the ductus arteriosus keep ascending up 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 and and uh, reaches the next uh, higher artery which is which is the fourth artery why fourth artery why not the fifth artery because fifth artery doesn't persist in the humans. So the thing is recurrent laryngeal nerve which is the nerve of sixth arch and which was hooking under the sixth arch artery ductus arteriosus as ductus arteriosus is lost it will now go to the higher artery higher artery and hook under what is called as the right sided subclavian artery. It will ascend up into the neck region but on the left side left side still the ductus arteriosus is persisting that is why the nerve is also persisting. The left sided recurrent laryngeal nerve hooks under the 
ligamentum arteriosum and then go towards the larynx. So it still remains in the thorax. Actually from the neck it will enter the thorax and go back into the neck region. It'll be passing the superior thoracic aperture two times. Once going into thorax, second time coming back into the neck region. Whereas the right rectilangeal nerve will stay only in the neck region. Let us draw this diagram ourselves now. You see this is the vagus nerve on the right side going down from the neck region into thorax and the abdomen region. And this is the left vagus nerve going down. Now vagus nerve is going to supply the larynx region. You can show vocal cords here in the larynx region. Now understand that vagus nerve will be giving two branches to the larynx. One of them is called as superior laryngeal nerve, the nerve of the fourth arch, fourth pharyngeal arch on either side. And then it will be also giving us the recurrent laryngeal nerve towards the larynx on either side. This recurrent laryngeal nerve, which is nerve of the sixth arch, is uh, hooking under the ductus arteriosus during development. But since the right regresses, the right ductus arteriosus regresses, it will be now hooking around the fourth arch artery, which is the subclavian artery on the right side. So you can show here right sided subclavian artery, which is the fourth arch artery. And this nerve is hooking under that to reach the larynx. So understand, Recurrential nerve on the right side, the nerve of the sixth arch is now hooking under artery of the fourth arch, which is right sided subclavian artery and stays in the neck region only. It does not enter the thorax region. Then, who is entering the thorax region? You can draw here superior thoracic aperture now. What is that? Superior thoracic aperture. You'll have to pass the superior thoracic aperture, then only you can enter the thorax. This is head and neck region, and this is the thorax region. Boundary line between head and neck and the thorax region. And then what about the recurrent nerve of the left side? You will notice this is the recurrent laryngeal nerve of the left side. And, and it is uh, passing the superior thoracic aperture two times. Why would the left recurrent laryngeal nerve will pass the superior thoracic aperture two times? Because ultimately it has to come to supply the larynx. But before it supply larynx, it was a nerve of the sixth arch. So, so it will be arching over the derivative of the sixth arch artery. And who is that? That is the ligamentum arteriosum. And what is this ligamentum arteriosum? It is hooking under, that is a remnant of the ductus arteriosus, the artery of the sixth arch, which is now attaching to arch of aorta, which came from the fourth arch. Ligamentum arteriosum attaches to arch of aorta, which came from fourth arch? Yes. Are you trying to say uh, left recurrential nerve is hooking not only under the ligamentum arteriosum, but also arch of aorta? Yes, both of them. And uh, then it will come back to supply the larynx. But in that process, it will be passing the superior thoracic aperture two times. Can be affected if there is a thoracic inlet syndrome. Thoracic inlet syndrome can affect the left recurrent angel nerve, which is longer as compared with the right. Right is not affected in thoracic inlet syndrome because it is staying in the neck region only, doesn't go to thorax at all. So one of them is longer. Yes, left is longer. You can see this diagram now, again. As you can notice, the right will stay in the neck region and left will enter the thorax and go back, like that. You can see it's here as well. This is the right recurrent laryngeal nerve hooking under the right subclavian artery, artery derived from the fourth arch on the right side, whereas on the left side it is longer and hooking under not only the ligamentum arteriosum, but also the arch of aorta. Ligamentum arteriosum come from the sixth arch artery, it's a remnant, and the fourth arch artery give you arch of aorta. So left recurrent nerve is longer as compared with the right recurrent nerve. And why? Because the sixth arch artery is still persisting on the left side as a remnant, that is the answer. You mean to say here, left recurrent laryngeal nerve longer due to persistence of the ligamentum arteriosum? Yes, that is the answer. It is a remnant of the sixth arch artery. Choice number D should be our answer here.